Our people must know the truth and nothing but the truth. So France remains as a member of the UN Security Council. And yet France today remains one of the biggest perpetrators of human rights violations in Africa. And everybody is giving it, the world is giving it a blind eye. United Nations. It is a body that's supposed to be the watchdog for human rights violations. France remains the biggest risk to peace and security in Africa today. And nobody is talking about it. France did something absolutely deplorable. Yes. Made the former colonists, because they still are colonized, wow. sign a document which they called the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization. Dig this. On one hand, we are giving you your independence. But on the other hand, sign this document that you are agreeing to continue to be colonized. So two countries said, no way, Jose. We aren't doing this, Guinea and Mali. The French could not understand it. How could an African country dare not want to be affiliated with France? So in their anger, <clears throat> history tells us that they went into those two countries, took everything that they thought they had brought, proceeded to pour concrete into the sewage pipes, completely devastating the two economies. This was also done as a way of letting the other countries know right. that should you refuse to sign this document, this is the fate that awaits you. So the rest of the country signed the pact for the continuation of colonization remains in place. What is special about this? The Pact for the Continuation of Colonization said, one, you shall deposit 85% of your bank reserves with the French Central Bank under the control of the French Minister of Finance. The French government will take all your monies, collectively invest your monies in the French stock market under the French name. And you don't have to know what the returns are. Should you wish to access some of your money, keep in mind that countries are now left with only 15% 15 of their reserves. You have to submit your country's financial report. And if approved, you get to access up to 20% of your deposits from the previous year as a loan at commercial interest rates. I'm going to repeat that. Should you want to access some of your own money, you have to submit your own country's financial report. And if approved, you get it as a loan at commercial interest rate. So you go from having a humongous credit with France to now owing France for borrowing your own money. A loan that you'll never be able to finish paying. They also said, all your minerals discovered and yet to be discovered, French companies have the first right of refusal. You go to those countries today, all major contracts, French companies have the first right of refusal. The water supply, the power supply, the mining fixtures, the oil rigs, roads construction, airports. French companies have the first right of refusal. If anything is left, the people in your country may get it. They also said, your military can only be trained by France. You can only purchase military equipment from France. France shall have military presence in your country and can invade your country without notice if France feels that her interests in your country are being violated. In the past many years, we've had 67 coups in Africa out of 26 countries. Of the 26 countries, the coups, 16 coups, were 16 countries were former French colonies. To date, 
22 African leaders were assassinated during a coup, documented all of them, France was behind it. Simply because France, France felt they were quote unquote threatening French interests. Countries are still depositing their funds to France. Do's and don'ts is stipulated by the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization. You have given up your financial resources. You have given up control of your natural resources. You have given up your military. What power do you have? But today, because of the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization, France alone, that little bitty country, is taking out of Africa over $500 billion. Over $500 billion. And by the time they finish investing that money into the French stock market, they are realizing trillions of dollars in any given year. Pack that. The watchdogs for corruption are saying out of Africa, 50 billion gets out of the continent from corruption. The question I have is, why has it been so difficult for us as Africans to say enough is enough? How long are we going to keep watching this carnage go on and we say nothing? It goes back to the mind goes back to that fear. Yes. It goes back to that sense of inferiority. Yes. And I go back to the diagnosis I made when I went to Washington. That until we black people understand that we are suffering yes. from the legacy of colonization, right. that we are suffering from the legacy of slavery, yes. that while we may have lost the shackles of the of the, in our legs and our hands, the shackles of the mind continue. Until we realize that we are a wounded people and we need healing, yes. nothing about our circumstances is going to change. We are sick people. But to, to, re, to be sick, first you must realize and accept that you're sick. How do you go to the doctor if you don't think you're sick? We are not only in the doctor's waiting room on our patient basis. We are not even in the hospital, in a general ward. As black people, we are in the intensive care. And we need to realize that. The baby is now born. And her name is the African Continental Free Trade Area. You see, the children of Africa must realize that now we need diapers, we need formula. They're going to be sleepless nights. This baby is going to cry. This baby is going to throw tantrums. We need to be ready to take care of this baby. Africa is on the move. Yes. The question is, are the children of Africa ready to step up and take what is rightfully yours? You got to understand around the globe, as black people, the reason we are so disrespected is because we are poor. Most of us don't own anything. Singularly, while we were given our independence, the one thing that was denied from us is economic liberation. The African heads of states are saying, Africa wealth, African wealth belongs to the African children. The African Union defines African diaspora as all people of African descent living outside Africa. The colonizers, have been building the Africa that they want. The game is up. You see, you don't go to China and find black people driving the Chinese development agenda. You don't go to Europe. You don't go to Mexico, India, and find black people driving their, those regions development agenda. The reality is, you must not, cannot, should not, and golly, will not go to Africa and find non-Africans driving the African continental development agenda. Yes. Unless, of course, you 
the children of Africa, the inheritors of Africa's wealth, yes. choose to vacate that place that has your name. Yes. The choice is yours. The environment is ready. Yes. And so, I'm on a mission to see to it that we, people of African descent, truly understand our Africa. Yes. Truly realize that we have been lied to. Yes. But that we are smart enough to know better. Yes. That we have been sleeping. That it's time to wake up. Yes. You see, a united African diaspora is a sleeping giant. Yes. It is the sleeping giant that is needed to bring the sustainable change that Africa desires. Bigger corruption in Africa is coming from outside. Yes. Try flying low over the DRC. You're going to see tarmacs in the middle of the jungle. You're going to see 747s flying into the DRC, picking up minerals and flying right outside the country. Do you think those multinationals are going to want to see peace in the DRC? Do you think they're going to want to see peace in South Sudan? No. A stable Africa is an Africa that cannot be exploited. So they will see to it that there will never be peace in Africa by any means necessary, unless you come to the table and do something about it. Yes. For a continent that doesn't have a single gun manufacturing company, we seem to have endless supply of guns. Okay. How? How? How is this okay that Africa continues to be exploited? How is it okay that the world has watched as France is taking cold, hard cash out of Africa? How is this okay? I want to know. United Nations, answer that. Secretary General Guterres, answer that. When you all meet every year in New York, what are you talking about? That is our reality. No more shall we continue to be ignorant. Our eyes are open. We know our Africa. We are going to reconnect with our roots. African Americans, you must understand there is a void yes. that is deep in each and every one's subconscious. It is a void that affects everything you do. First, you must understand you have that void. In this country, with the exception of the American Indians, everybody is a foreigner. And everybody has their roots outside the United States, and the rest of the races are connected to their roots with the exception of the African Americans. You're too busy running away from your roots. You're busy denying who you are. Well, guess what? It is what it is. You are an African, and Africa is home. And the sooner you wake up and realize and accept that Africa is home, the sooner you are going to fill that void. For as long as that voice is in you, you're always going to be like a ship without an anchor. The wind blows this way, here you go. The wind blows the other way, here we go. Find your base. Go home. Africa is where you belong. And Africa is where your roots are. Thank you. We stand alongside you and we support your mission and your fight. Please accept this as a small token of our appreciation. Thank you. But as I began to make a diagnosis, I analyzed the situation, and my final assessment was that the ignorance that the world has about Africa is the disease that I must fight. So I set out to have a plan, and I began implementation. Because it is only when that disease is treated it is only then and only then can we embark on a true healing path for Africa and her children. The African continental free trade area is creating an economy that's $3 trillion with a work workforce intra-Africa of $1.27 billion. An environment that you can spread and grow your business like wildfire from one country to the other. Yes. The borders that have kept us from trading with each other as African countries 
are in the process of being melted as we speak.